Dwight Moody, a pastor, preacher, and evangelist of the latter decades of the 19th century, found his niche in church history by his enormously successful revival tour of Great Britain in the spring of 1872. Moody preached nearly 100 times and filled stadiums with crowds up to nearly 30,000 people. Charles Spurgeon, the famous London Baptist preacher, became a staunch supporter of Moody and promoted his tour of England. Crowds of nearly 20,000 people reappeared when Moody returned to the United States and his revival tour of America began. While on his revival tour of England, Moody came in contact with the Plymouth Brethren and was exposed to Darby's form of premillennialism. Shortly, he included the imminent return of Jesus Christ and the pre-tribulation rapture doctrine into his revival sermons. Moody's premillennial message was somewhat confusing because he totally did not understand the nuances of Darby's dispensationalism. Dwight Moody did contribute significantly to the rise of dispensationalism, especially within the United States. His followers were fiercely loyal and staunch dispensationalists who looked in anticipation to the coming rapture. Dwight Moody blazed the trail for the spread of dispensationalism in the United States. Nearly every major evangelist that followed Moody until World War I carried Darby's dispensational message. Moody and his successors organized schools that would promote this new version of dispensational premillennialism. The most successful of these schools are Chicago's Moody Bible Institute, the Bible Institute of Los Angeles, also known as Biola, and Dallas Theological Seminary. From the root of Dwight Moody and these institutes, Bible prophecy conferences spread across the United States between 1875 and 1900. The dispensational message went out to the evangelical Protestant community through these conferences, and the message took hold. Eventually, the dispensationalist message supplanted the other forms of eschatology, especially post-millennialism. America, like England, had a problem. The Bible was losing ground to liberal theologians and Darwinism. Something needed to be done. Darby's futurist premillennialism provided an explanation to the Protestant community for the serious embarrassment created by William Miller and his date-setting debacle. When Darby came to America, he helped establish a group known as the Believers Meeting for Bible Studies, where his form of dispensationalism was planted. James Brooks, a Presbyterian pastor from St. Louis, Missouri, participated in these Bible studies and became an avid Darbyite. He was instrumental in a series of prophecy conferences that were convened at Niagara-on-the-Lake in Ontario, Canada in 1875. From these conferences, the Niagara Bible Conference was formed, and the 1878 Niagara Creed was drawn up. This 14-point statement of faith merged Darby's futurism with a new Christian movement that would grow in popularity during the first two decades of the 20th century. And that movement is Christian fundamentalism. Christian fundamentalists would have a profound impact on the social and political direction of America in the 20th century.
during the latter 19th and early 20th century. Dispensationalism spread along the trail, forged by Dwight Moody and his Bible prophecy conferences. This mode of teaching and communication has a lot of positive strengths, but it has one glaring weakness. Each prophecy teacher had his or her own unique variety of dispensationalism. In simple terms, there was no quality control. Cyrus Schofield came along and solidified the dispensationalist message by publishing in 1909 his annotated study Bible through Oxford University Press. The Schofield Reference Bible was a traditional King James Version of the Bible, but Schofield linked his study notes to the corresponding biblical text on the same page. This annotation format was brilliant because his readers had a tendency to view his annotation in the same light as Holy Scripture. It wasn't long before Schofield's study notes were cited as sacred scripture. Schofield's Reference Bible is considered the most important single document in all of fundamentalist literature. By 1990, the Schofield Reference Bible has sold more than 10 million copies. Dispensational premillennialism won out in the Battle of Eschatologies in the United States, but its impact on Great Britain and continental Europe was less significant. During the remainder of the 20th century, dispensationalism ferreted itself into nearly all segments of American society. More is yet to come. One thing should be clear by now. Millennium thinking can change the course of the world and inflame strong human passion. The political direction of kings and countries have been manipulated by millennium fever. Cities have burned and people have been massacred by competing views of end time prophecy. The hands of eschatology is covered in the blood of the martyrs. It is easy to view the atrocities of eschatology throughout history and shun in horror. But are we any different than our brothers and sisters in Christ, who torched whole sections of England and Europe for the sake of millennium fever? We may not have the political authority to do such exploits, but I have seen churches split over differing millennial opinions. Maybe we need to be like Justin Martyr of the second century, who refused to make eschatology a condition of brotherhood. He said, I and many others are of this opinion and believe that such will take place. But on the other hand, many who belong to the pure and pious faith and are true Christians think otherwise. eschatology should never be a condition of brotherhood. Different opinions do exist. We build our relationship with our brothers and sisters in Christ on the person of Jesus Christ, not the eschatologies about Christ. The truth is, our eschatology might be more Jesuit than Jesus. <laughs>